Although there is no shortage of news about the British royal family, they're far from the only set of royals out there. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the glamorous Danish royal family. The Danish monarchy is one of the oldest in the entire world and has reigned for over 1,000 years. We'll give you a quick history and then introduce you to some of the modern and fabulous members of this distinguished family. Queen Elizabeth II may be the longest reigning monarch, but Queen Margrethe is the first female monarch in all of Denmark's extensive history. Monarchies are known for being an extremely ancient form of government, but this doesn't mean they haven't evolved and changed over the years. In fact, recent years have brought considerable alterations to monarchies all over the world. Some actually consider these additions to be quite progressive. For example, in the British royal family, when a male heir was born, his right to the throne would take precedence over female members of the family. But the Queen changed this prior to the birth of Princess Charlotte, so she maintained her place in the line of succession, despite the birth of her little brother, Prince Louis. In the Danish royal family, male heirs had always taken precedence over female heirs. It was technically possible for a female to inherit the throne if there were no other male heirs available, but that changed in the 1850s. At that point, it was determined that only males could ascend to the throne of Denmark, but King Frederick IX of Denmark was one of those royal people that marched to the beat of his own drum. To put it simply, King Frederick was an exceptionally popular man. Most members of royal families are known for being distinguished and wealthy beyond the imaginations of us mere commoners. Frederick had an impressive lineage and grew up as the heir to the throne, but he appeared different from many members of his royal family. While Prince Charles once admitted he has someone tie his shoes for him, Frederick answered his own telephone and knew his way around a vacuum cleaner. He had no fondness for wearing traditional crowns and in many ways seemed to tire of the countless traditions he was expected to participate in. Even his decision to be educated at the Royal Danish Naval Academy and pursue a naval career was considered a huge break in Royal Danish tradition. Even though he was heir to the throne, this didn't stop Frederick from accumulating several tattoos during his time in the Navy. How many royal family members have been spotted showing off their tattoos at the beach, especially a king? And rather than cause him to be looked down upon, this helped endear him to the Danish people. People found King Frederick to be immensely charming and relatable, and even affectionately compared him to Popeye the Sailor Man. He sent his children to public schools and could frequently be seen riding his bicycle and visiting local shops. His popularity not only benefited him as a ruler, it benefited his children as well. King Frederick married Queen Ingrid and the two of them went on to have three daughters. It was assumed that eventually the king and queen would welcome a male heir, but as time went on, it became clear that wouldn't happen. Many people speculated that Frederick's younger brother, Prince Nudd, would ascend to the throne, but that changed in 1953. Because the king was so popular, and because of the changing roles of women in Denmark, a major change had been in the works for quite some time. It was decided that if the king and queen had no male heir, their eldest daughter would be allowed to ascend to the throne. Thus, Margaret became the heir presumptive and eventually the queen. Not only was Queen Margaret the first female Danish monarch in centuries, but she's the second longest reigning as well. And much like her father, Queen Margaret was proven to be exceptionally popular and well-loved by her people. She eventually married a French diplomat who became known as Prince Henrik, the very first male consort to a Danish monarch. Now, the rules about royal titles can be confusing, and they vary depending on what country we're talking about. Generally speaking, the reigning monarch has final say in all titles and blood plays a huge part in what title you're qualified for. This particular rule is one which seems a bit antiquated, but persists nonetheless. To explain it, let's take a look at the very well-known British royal family. Because Queen Elizabeth, a woman, has royal blood and her male partner, Philip, does not, he only gets the title of prince and not king. However, if the genders were reversed, they would be king and queen. For instance, when the male heir, Prince William, becomes king, his wife, Kate, will become queen and not princess. Because Queen Margaret is a woman of royal blood, her male partner receives the title of prince. But while Prince Philip has always been happy to support Queen Elizabeth, Prince Henrik has been outwardly disdainful of the disparity in the titles held by he and his wife. He would frequently complain about not being made a king and complained it made him look like a fool. There was a surprising disparity in the public opinion of the queen and her husband. Most people adore Queen Margaret, but Prince Henrik gained reputation for being arrogant and difficult. Although he professed to love his wife, he kept complaining about his title right up until his death in 2018. Margaret is an accomplished painter who provided the illustrations for the Danish edition of The Lord of the Rings, under a pseudonym. 
She has held many art shows showcasing her painting, and she's also designed costumes for both stage and screen. But of course, the queen has her flaws as well. She was known for being a huge chain smoker and was frequently spotted indulging in her vice of choice. However, in 2006, she decided to only smoke cigarettes in private and not in the view of the public. During their marriage, Margaret and Henrik had two sons, Prince Frederick and Prince Joachim. Prince Frederick is the elder of the two brothers and is the heir apparent to the throne of Denmark. He also has a love story more befitting of a prince in a Disney movie than one in real life. Like his grandfather, King Frederick, Prince Frederick pursued a career in the Navy and has numerous tattoos which he isn't shy about showing off. He grew up knowing he would someday ascend to the throne, but his wife Mary did not grow up wanting to be a princess. In fact, she had grown up wanting to be a veterinarian. Mary, full name Mary Donaldson, was exploring a local flea market when she encountered a fortune teller offering tarot card readings. She agreed to receive one and was told that she would soon find herself leaving her job in order to meet a mysterious man from overseas. The fortune teller asserted that Mary would soon become famous and spend the rest of her life living in Europe. When Mary left, she was convinced that the reading was just in good fun and didn't take it seriously. But not long after that, she met a charming man named Fred at the 2000 Sydney Olympics. At first, Mary had no idea she was chatting with the prince until her friends excitedly pointed it out after the chat. According to Prince Frederick, the pair just clicked and soon embarked on a long-distance relationship. Like many of us would be, Mary was intimidated by the idea of dating a real-life prince. She paid over $1,000 for a makeover and a crash course in confidence and etiquette. Seriously, this really does sound like something straight from a Disney movie, complete with a fairy tale wedding. Prince Frederick and Princess Mary are an active couple who enjoy cycling, running, and many other athletic pursuits. These interests are also shared with their four adorable children, Prince Christian, Princess Isabella, and the twins Prince Vincent and Princess Josephine. Currently, Prince Frederick's younger brother, Prince Joachim, is sixth in line for the throne, behind Frederick and his four children. Prince Joachim also hasn't been as lucky in love as his elder brother. He met his first wife, Alexandra, while at a party in Hong Kong, and after a quick and mostly private year of dating, the two were married in a lavish ceremony. The public was shocked by this move and soon began wondering how long this marriage would last as this couple became increasingly distant from one another while in public. To fans of the British royal family, the dynamic between Prince Frederick and Princess Joachim will seem familiar. Prince Frederick is known for being a bit more serious in his royal duties while Prince Joachim gained a reputation for being something of a party-goer. It wasn't unusual for news outlets to report that Joachim was engaged in rowdy behavior even during his marriage to Alexandra. While they were together, the couple had two children, Prince Nikolai and Prince Felix. Divorce is never easy, and it's only more complex when the family involved is royalty. Under the Danish law, the two princes are not allowed to leave Denmark, meaning that their mother was also confined. Despite the divorce, Alexandra was well-liked by the Danish people and was known for both her extensive charity work and her impeccable fashion sense. In fact, she was often compared to the late Princess Diana in this respect. Prince Joachim met his current wife, Princess Marie of Denmark, while he was still married to Alexandra, although they were not romantically involved at the time. His divorce to Alexandra was finalized in April 2005, and in August of that year he was already spotted taking a holiday with Marie in France. Unsurprisingly, Marie was suddenly the focus of a ton of media attention, and she began to have doubts about her new relationship. But ultimately, she decided that being with Joachim was worth all of the added pressure of being a member of the royal family. Although she takes great joy in her family and her eight grandchildren, Queen Margaret knows that it's only a matter of time before she passes away. When her husband, Prince Henrik, was in his final days, he blatantly refused to be buried next to his wife. He claimed to be so resentful about being denied the title of king that he would not rest alongside his wife until it was his. As we know, Queen Margaret did not change his title, and so his wishes to be buried separately from her were respected. But despite this, there is no doubt that the Queen loved her stubborn husband and wished for her final resting place to pay tribute to him, even if he wasn't buried there. An elaborate tomb has been built for the Queen, and it has been displayed at St. Birgitta's Chapel in Roskilde Cathedral. Kings and queens have found their final resting places here since the Middle Ages, and Queen Margaret is no exception. Although Prince Henrik was known for hating his title, he did also show a tremendous amount of love for the queen at times. After his passing, it was revealed that he had arranged for his funeral flowers to be arranged into a blooming garden. During their wedding vows some 50 years earlier, he had called the country of Denmark a blossoming garden and added that the queen was the most beautiful adornment.
What do you think about the Danish royal family? Are they just another group of royals or should we be paying more attention? Let us know what you think in the comments section and then click on the subscribe button for more videos from us here at the Taco. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time.